Hello and welcome to The Chemistry Solution. This tutorial is on drawing Lewis structures for molecules. And this tutorial specifically covers basic structures. The first thing you need to do before drawing a Lewis structure for a molecule is to count up the number of valence electrons for each atom in the molecule. And you can do this easily by using the group number for each atom on your periodic table. You then need to adjust the number of valence electrons if you are drawing the structure of an ion. And we'll talk about this a little bit more when we go through one of our examples. But if you have an ion with an overall charge of negative 2, that means that that molecule as a whole has two extra electrons, so you would add 2 to your total number of valence electrons. And likewise, if you had a positively charged ion that had a net positive charge of plus 1, that means that that molecule as a whole has one less electron. And so you would subtract one electron from your total number of valence electrons. The second thing you need to do is to draw the atoms in the molecule bonded together. And you'll always want to start with single bonds. Now typically the central atom is written first in a molecule, or the atoms in the molecule are written in the order in which they are bonded. And normally, if you're asked to draw Lewis structures, you're not given molecules with super complicated structures. And so typically, examples in Lewis structure problems follow these rules. Otherwise, you would need more information about how to draw the atoms bonded together. The other thing that you need to remember is that each bond that's drawn as a line contains two electrons. So when you're counting up the total number of valence electrons in your structure, each solid line counts for two electrons. And then thirdly, you need to fill in the remaining valence electrons to give all of the atoms in your structure an octet of electrons. And you'll leave the central atom for last. If you go to fill in the octet for the central atom and you don't have enough electrons left, Oftentimes, that means that the structure contains a double or triple bond. So if there aren't enough electrons to complete all the octets, that's when we'll use multiple bonds. And if there are some extra valence electrons, we'll place them around the central atom. Now you might have noticed that placing extra electrons around a central atom means that it would have more than an octet of electrons. And so there are some exceptions to the octet rule, and we'll talk about these here. Remember that drawing Lewis structures is just a way for us to visualize the structures of molecules. And so because it's just an approximation, there are going to be exceptions to this octet rule. So the first is that hydrogen and helium both have their valence shells filled with only two electrons, so they don't need an octet of electrons around them. But you'll want to make sure each of them is surrounded by two electrons. The second exception is that boron often only has six electrons. So this is an exception where an atom can have less than an octet of electrons. You might run into some compounds that are free radicals, and those are compounds with an odd number of electrons. Obviously, if you have an odd number of electrons, you're not going to be able to ensure that every atom has an octet, which is an even number of electrons around it. And last, atoms with D subshells in that third row of your periodic table and lower can hold more than eight electrons. And so those would be the atoms where you could put extra electrons around that central atom as long as it has a D subshell. It can violate the octet rule by having more than eight electrons in its valence shell. Let's look at an example. Let's draw the correct Lewis structure for carbon tetrachloride, CCl4. The first thing we're going to do is to add up the total number of valence electrons for the molecule. And remember we can do this by looking at the group number for each atom in the periodic table. I also think that when you first start drawing Lewis structures, it might be handy to set up a chart to keep track of your valence electrons. And so here I have the type of atom, the number of atoms of that type in the molecule, the number of valence electrons each of those atoms have, and the total number of valence electrons contributed. So we have two types of atoms in carbon tetrachloride, carbon and chlorine. We have one carbon atom in CCl4, and we have four chlorine atoms in CCl4. If you look at your periodic table, you'll see that carbon is in the fourth group, which means carbon has four valence electrons. 
And when we multiply the number of valence electrons times the number of atoms, we come up with four valence electrons total contributed from carbon. Looking at our periodic table still, we'll see that chlorine is in the seventh group on the periodic table and has seven valence electrons. Now each atom of chlorine has seven valence electrons and because we have four chlorine atoms, that means that those four chlorine atoms contribute a total of 28 valence electrons. Now when we add up the total number of valence electrons, we'll see that we have 32 valence electrons that we need to include in our structure. The second step is to draw the atoms bonded together. And remember that each bond counts as two electrons. So we'll draw carbon in the middle. Remember that most often the central atom is written first. Bonded to one, two, three, four chlorine atoms. Now at this point we have used eight of our valence electrons, two electrons in each bond or in each solid line. That means we have 24 electrons left to draw in our structure. So the third step is to fill in the remaining valence electrons to give each atom an octet of electrons. So we'll start by filling in the octets for each of the chlorine atoms. So there's two, four, six, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. So we've used up the remaining 24 valence electrons. And we've given each chlorine atom an octet of electrons. So now we need to double check to make sure that we used all 32 electrons. So remember that each bond counts as two electrons. So there's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32. So we've used all 32 valence electrons. The next thing we need to do is to double check to make sure that each atom has an octet or eight electrons. And remember when we're counting up the electrons to make sure that each atom has an octet, so remember that each pair of bonded electrons, or those two electrons, counts for each of the atoms in that bond. So carbon is surrounded by two, four, six, eight electrons, all of them being bonded electrons. And then each chlorine atom is surrounded by two electrons from the bond, and then four, six, eight non-bonding electrons. And that's the same for each of these chlorine atoms. So as we check, we'll see that each chlorine atom and the carbon atom are all surrounded by an octet of electrons. That would make this a correct Lewis structure. Let's look at one more example. Let's look at drawing the correct Lewis structure for the sulfate ion, SO3, 2 minus. First, we'll start by adding up the total number of valence electrons for the molecule. We have one sulfur atom in SO3, 2 minus. Each sulfur atom has six valence electrons because it's in the sixth group on the periodic table. And we have three oxygen atoms in our molecule. And each oxygen also has six valence electrons because it's also in the sixth group on the periodic table. This gives us a total of 24 valence electrons. But what about the charge on that ion? Remember when I talked about this previously, if the molecule has a net negative charge of minus two, that means that the molecule as a whole has two extra electrons. So that increases our number of valence electrons to 26 valence electrons that we need to include in our structure. The next thing we're going to do is to draw these atoms bonded together. Remembering that each bond counts as two electrons. So we'll draw sulfur as our central atom because it's listed first, bonded to one, two, three oxygen atoms because there's three oxygen atoms in the molecule. Now we've used up six electrons. Let's go ahead and fill in the remaining valence electrons to give each atom an octet of electrons. And so we'll start by filling in the octets for each of the oxygen atoms. So we've used six electrons. So there's eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, and then we'll fill in the octet for the central atom last, 26 electrons. So now we'll double check to make sure that we used all 26 electrons, remembering that each bond counts for two. So there's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 
14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. And next we'll check to make sure that each atom is surrounded by an octet of electrons. So sulfur is surrounded by six bonding electrons and two non-bonding electrons, giving it a total of eight. And each oxygen atom is surrounded by two bonding electrons and six non-bonding electrons, giving each oxygen atom an octet of electrons. And then for an ion, we'll surround the entire structure with brackets and write the charge of the ion on the outside. So this would be the correct Lewis structure for the sulfate ion, SO3-2. Thanks for watching The Chemistry Solution. We hope you enjoyed this tutorial. 